Hello everyone. Well, it's the last Friday before the new year and I got a few things to show you here. This is the last bag of Black Morel sawdust spawn I have. I've let it grow for uh, about three and a half months. It was made on September the 13th. You can see I let this one uh, not go into the ground because I had not this nice big sclerosis on it I wanted to get out and examine. You can see right there. And this is one of the bags that I didn't mix didn't mix up. You can see all the growth on the side of it where the green was. Not a whole lot of other large sclerosis in there that I can see against the plastic. You can see some more right here and such. And again, the unmixed bags didn't do as well. But I like that I made that one big one so we can examine it. Also, too, here's uh, one of the original petri dishes I did. You can see it's actually gone all moldy with green mold because the agar eventually dried out. And then once it dried out, mold could uh, overtake the morel mushroom mycelium. But these jars that I made with liquid culture, if you remember, I still have them now. They're like a little crazy microclimate in there. It still has a little bit of water in it. But you can see all the, all the different styles of the morel mycelium growing. They're all stretched and reaching up into the air trying to find new growth but they'll never find it of course that's why it has a fuzzy look to it here's one that pretty much got all the water off the bottom sucked out of course no no more real primordia growing in these maybe if i had done it and then put them in the freezer uh, for you know a few, few weeks kind of follow that schedule of people do where you you have to have a freezing cycle with the morels for them to even start fruiting and of course people have done that on petri dishes it's just never gone past the the small primordial stage also too i have this bag of sawdust spawn that i didn't plant because i was a little bit uh concerned that perhaps all this white mycelium you see growing here was a contamination Although I haven't seen any mold from it, and it could just be the you know one of the one of the varieties of morel mycelium, I don't know. So I didn't really fool with it. I might open it up too and see uh, if there's anything interesting to look at on the inside. So let's uh, open this up and take a look what's inside. Something else I'd like to point out before I get started doing this is that I. I figured out with my GoPro Hero Silver uh, that the ProTune feature wasn't even turned on. So that might be why a lot of my videos kind of have a, a sharp grainy look to it. So now I got that working and hopefully this video will, and the, and the ones coming will look a lot better quality. Um, for starters, I have this sclerotia that I took from outside from one of the outdoor bags because it looked nice and large. It's already been dried out. You can see the sawdust on the back end still stuck to it. I can probably get most of that off now. I should rub it with my fingers. Let's go ahead and weigh this and see how much. It feels like maybe a gram or two. Uh, 1.21 grams for a sclerotia that size dried. So that's pretty dense. And if we break it in half, you can see it's thin. Same color through the inside. Has maybe a a little bit of a light nutty scent to it. Most Glorosha has kind of a nutty odor and flavor.
Alright, we just take a look at the top of this. You can see lots of fuzzy growth and quite a bit of smaller sclerotia forming. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this a little better to this side where there's better light. Yeah, see so if you can see in there. Seems to be very loose. Not held together very hard at all. And that would be expected because the chlorel mycelium is very wispy, very thin. That's why it can travel so far and fast. And also, too, why it's so hard to identify any sclerotia underneath the ground and outdoor specimens because there's no way you'd be able to find it in black topsoil dirt or hard clay. You'd have to dig and dig and dig around the, the whole area and then sift the dirt. Feels kind of weird. It's kind of. Kind of squishy and fuzzy at the same time, but not like a not like a mold. It actually has some texture to it. See that there? There's a, all those little dots you see are little mini sclerotias. I can see the border of where all this grain is in here against the side of where it meets the sawdust. Eh. It looks like the interior is pretty much like the top of it. Still some microsclerosia in there. Nothing large. There's that large one. Looks like it's about oh, two and a half to three centimeters in length. Small ones off to the side of it. some of the sawdust off the back end of it. And this, this one's actually thinner than the one I brought from the outside. It's real thin. So there has to be some sort of natural function of the sclerotia getting large when they meet a a border like plastic or concrete or a rock or something like that. Maybe because the mushroom knows that when it's up against something solid like that, that usually means there is a wind break, and you know, a, an area of higher moisture and lower wind that's going to allow the mushroom to grow better. Like you know, maybe the, the side of a building or a tree crotch of a tree root or something. See this one's very thin. I'm actually a piece of, broke a piece out of there. Go ahead and weigh it too. Fresh. Yeah it only comes out to 0.73 grams fresh so the one I pulled from outside was actually twice as large at least. Now, like most sclerotia, this is really no more than 50% water. It's very hard and dry to begin with, even fresh. 
So when it dries, you're only going to lose about half the weight. While if it was fresh mushrooms and you dried them, you would lose about 90% of the weight because of all the water content. I wonder if I can find any. I wonder if I can find any large ones on the inside. That'd be nice, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Doesn't look like there's any mini sclerotia forming inside the mass of grain, which is kind of expected because there really wasn't hardly any sclerotia forming in the grain bags. Any other large one on the outside? You know, I never really checked check the bottom of this either. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a decent sized one on the bottom. Still very thin though. Yeah, it looks like just uh, different areas have a bit a bit larger microscolorosia. That's just some dense mycelium there. But otherwise, like I said before, the, the mixed bags perform so much better. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to find. Alright, well. There it is, fresh and dried. Black morel sclerotia. Maybe the only pictures of it, videos of it, you'll find on the internet. I'll take some high-res photos of this too. I'll have one of my, one of my friends has a good um, S7 phone with a good camera on it. I'll take some macro shots. All right, well that does it for this video, guys. Stay tuned, I'll probably be posting more pottery videos. And uh, probably come around, I'm thinking, oh, March of next year is when we'll, we'll start seeing some more King Oyster videos being made. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go the, the case grain route because that the last video you saw were um, about an inch of vermiculite uh, had two of the blocks producing pretty well. Um, so a little bit of deformities there, but you know, that could have been the strain. And everything I'm doing is going to be started from spores too. So, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.